You've probably asked yourself, how does someone react to genocide? Like this. We f your babies, yeah. The answer is, they've been conditioned to. And it starts in their education system. Here are three examples of how Israel teaches the dehumanization of Palestinians. According to this Israeli professor's research, Israeli textbooks show Palestinians, or Arabs as they're called, as caricatures of primitive farmers, hordes of refugees, or they're masked and painted as terrorists. You cannot find one photograph of a human being who is a Palestinian. And it might explain how you end up with videos like this. We need to kill the uh, Arabs. <laughs> The way they are represented are as the problems and threats. And since they never or hardly ever meet Palestinians face to face or speak to them, although they may live 50 to 100 meters from them, this is what they know. If you type map of Israel in Hebrew into Google, this is what you'll get. Notice how a lot of these maps have no clear markings showing the occupied West Bank, East Jerusalem, and the Gaza Strip, all of which are internationally recognized as illegally occupied Palestinian territories. You'll also find this map in Israeli textbooks. It's how you end up with illegal settlers colonizing more and more Palestinian land, claiming it's their God-given right. It's all it! What you see? It belongs to Israel. And it's how you end up with scenes like this. You have this necklace? That's Palestine, yeah. This is Israel. <laughs> Students in Israel are taught about the Holocaust starting in nursery school all the way to the 12th grade. Part of that learning is looking at horrifying images or exercises that encourage students to put themselves in the shoes of the victims and relate to the experience. The identification of students with the victims isn't a coincidence. It's an intentional policy by the Israeli Ministry of Education. It's how you end up with a society where, according to one Israeli professor, every Jewish Israeli citizen is a Holocaust survivor or a potential victim of future Holocaust-like events. The goal is traumatization and revenge, and not to let the fire of vengeance die out. However, this vengeance is not directed towards the German persecutors and their collaborators in Europe, but towards Palestinian colonized subjects who are Nazified. <laughs> The fact that Palestinians had nothing to do with the Holocaust and that they are the ones currently being exterminated seems to be irrelevant. With this weaponization of the Holocaust, Zionism isn't seen for the settler colonial racist ideology that it is, but as the savior of the Jewish people. And it's this thinking and this fear that is weaponized to justify the violence of the Zionist state. That it must exist and do whatever is necessary to defend itself so that another Holocaust would never happen again. That's how you end up with videos like this. It is a terrorist organization which murders Jews because they're Jews. Once the Jewish people were defenseless, no longer. So why does this matter? Israelis spend 12 years in this education system, teaching them to dehumanize Palestinians and see them as people looking to eliminate Jews, not an oppressed, colonized people looking for freedom. And once they graduate, most Jewish Israelis will go straight to the military to do their two to three years of mandatory service, where they become the front lines of apartheid and occupation. That's how we end up with videos like this. So why do all this? Well, Israel can only exist as a Jewish state if it manages demographics to maintain a Jewish majority. And it does so by displacing, imprisoning, and murdering Palestinians routinely. And the only way to get Jews to participate in this is by convincing them that it's the only way for them to exist safely. Seeing Palestinians as people who want to live in peace and be free doesn't fit into that plan. Subscribe for more and support us on Patreon. Oh my god, my heart rate right now is like skyrocketed because for some reason just that really affected me. Um, where do I even start?
But I think this is why we always see the Israeli victim mentality going on, where the Israelis say, like, you're anti-Semitic, um, because they're genuinely taught to believe that if they don't murder innocent Palestinians, if they don't murder, they don't kill those babies, that those babies are going to grow up to kill them. Like, they genuinely, wholeheartedly believe they are defending themselves because they can predict the future of all these Palestinians, which is to invade their land and kill them. Seeing the international court trial going on with um, South Africa coming up and actually making a case for genocide against Israel, I think it should be testament to show people that South Africa, a country that used to be apartheid country, where the black people were, I mean, Nelson Mandela was called a terrorist, you know, like very similar to what's going on in um, Palestine right now. They managed to overcome that. And the white people of that country who genuinely believed that if black people had freedom, black people would kill them and ruin their lives. The white people of that country now live in peace most of the time um, with black people in a way that they can come together and make a case for Palestine at the international court. It shows that this, we can't live in peace. The group that we're oppressing will get up and murder us if we um, don't kill them first. It, it's just a complete lie. And South Africa is proof of that. I mean, the only way, I've said this in so many of my videos, but the only way that the people of Israel who are committing a genocide, I mean, it's not every Israeli, right? There are good Israelis that are um, protesting for ceasefire that don't believe in this stuff but it must have taken them quite a lot to get out of that mindset the people that want to go in and kill all the civilians in gaza or any palestinian for that matter and probably any arab even for that matter for those people it made me wonder for so long how do they do what they do and sleep at night and feel like they're the good people, feel like they're the heroes, because they are genuinely convinced from birth that these Palestinians are savage, horrible, terrorist people, that if they don't kill their babies, their babies are gonna grow up and kill them. I mean, it's an illogical, ridiculous lie. There is not one single ethnicity in the entire world, there is not an ethnicity that exists where every single person that ethnicity is a bad person, that, that ethnicity doesn't exist. And if you're sitting there thinking to yourself right now, oh, but what about this group of people? Then you've been brainwashed because it just doesn't exist, that's racism. Just because somebody is born as a particular ethnicity, as a particular nationality, it does not make them a future mass murderer who's going to murder your family. It's completely illogical and ridiculous. You wonder how do these normal people, you know, a lot of the people that go to the IDF, they're 18 when they go, um, because they have to, law by the country, they're normal people, right? They're not, a lot of people that join are not bloodthirsty, they're normal people, but how can you convince an entire nation to kill innocent people? I mean, a great example of this is Nazi Germany. It's a great example of a country, the Nazis specifically, who were normal people before the war, and then after the war, were killing innocents, were putting innocents in gas chambers. How do you go from being a civilian to a mass murderer? I've been thinking about it and looking into it a lot. Actually, when the Nazis were put on trial after the war had ended, when confronted and asked why they did what they did, the Nazis actually said, because I was told to. <laughs> I mean, it's not really a valid argument, but that's how they convinced themselves to put innocent people into gas chambers, innocent Jewish people into gas chambers. There was actually this study called the Stanley Milgram study, a professor at Yale who studied, who wanted to really figure out why the Nazis did what they did. So he put an advert out to get ordinary men, a variety of ages, variety of job professions, to take part in the study. And he had the volunteers, and then he had some friends pretending to act as volunteers. So the volunteers were the teachers, and the professor's friends who were acting as volunteers were the students. And actually he got these men one side of a wall, and his, and um 
the student was the other side of the wall and she, the student was attached to electrodes and he said to the teacher whenever your student yes the student has to memorize some words whenever they get the words wrong you have to give them electric shock and every single time you give them the electric shock the voltage will go up each time the teachers would give electric shocks and then the other side of the wall they would hear screams shouting please stop like pain screams obviously they weren't real but it's for the experiment right the teacher thought they were real and then when the teacher got uncomfortable the teacher would turn around and say to the authority behind them i don't want to do this anymore and then the authority would push them four times would say things like no you must carry on no you, you have to carry on you have no choice but to carry on they did this four times and then after the fourth time if the teacher still didn't want to carry on they let the teacher go they were under no legal obligation to do this by the way this was just an authoritative figure telling them you need to do this two-thirds of the men two-thirds of them took the voltage right up to the maximum which by the way the maximum voltage of this could kill a person and then the other third took it up to a high past 300, which is around three fourths of the way. So everyone took it up to a high number, two thirds took it all the way. And I think that goes to show how us as humans are so susceptible to, to leaders and figures above us. And that's not to say that, oh, we must feel sorry for the Israeli people because, you know, everyone has responsibility in their actions. But in order to tame something you need to name it I don't know if you guys have heard this before but I use this expression all the time in order to tame it you need to name it so in order to understand what it is why the Israelis are doing what they're doing it's important to figure out the reason why and once you figure out the reason why I think it's easier to debunk to actually have proper conversations with these people I mean it's not going to change overnight but to understand the psychology behind it I think it's quite helpful we can get rid of those myths of the Palestinians are evil, the Palestinians are going to... Muslims are evil, Arabs are evil. I mean, my entire channel is based on the fact of trying to debunk the myth that Muslims are evil people. Inshallah, keep using your voices, keep raising money. I've got my Gaza fundraiser in the comment and the description. Please donate if you have the means to. And before I go, there's one video that I saw on Instagram recently which will help you get into the psychology of the IDF and the Israeli people. I think this video is going to leave you with more questions than answers. Thank you guys for watching. Assalamualaikum. <laughs>